The representative from Lustria has the floor. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new undercity. Conceived in plague and dedicated to the proposition that most rat men are created equal. <laughs> no! Skin is a barrier race! Ratman Chi-Chi! Well, this clan clan, Underhorned Rat, believe the Skaven deserve a new birth of freedom, and that a council of the Rat, by the Rat, for the Rat, shall not perish from this earth. Yeah, no. We're having none of that. Pack your shit. We're doing a Skaven Civil War episode. My name is Riggs, and my friend Mac and I got into a little total Warhammer Civil dispute, where I'll be playing as the Plague Lords of Clan Pestilence. And I will be playing as the Warlord Tyrants of Clan Moors. So with all that settled, we now welcome you to the Great Rat Wars, where no matter who wins, the rest of the world loses. <laughs> now is the time, time of the rat. Let's start this story up with Mac and what led up to this War of the Rats. Our campaign starts in Blightwater Province, at our home city of the Misty Mountain. If you don't know where the fuck that is, I got you. We start here in Blightwater, and Riggs starts all the way over here across the sea in the jungles of Lustria. So the bad rat man is to the west of us. To start our campaign, I captured the whole of Blightwater with our coke dump <laughs> friend and started crafting devious plans to win the campaign and put that boy Riggs in a wooshy finger hold. The easiest way to win a head-to-head -head campaign is to expand fast. More settlements means more armies and more money, which gives us the resources we need to drown rigs in a sea of rats. And drowning rigs in a sea of rats is possible because rat life is very cheap. This awesome skill comes with our warlord generals. Reducing Skaven slave upkeep? These guys by a whopping 83%. So each one of our armies costs the price of a gumball, allowing us to recruit dozens and dozens of armies and stretch our meager economy to its absolute limits. So now that we have our live ammunition, we can load our machine gun of expansion and spread our vermintide across the world. During our expansion, the Greenskins tried to resist at Karak, Eight Peaks, and at Ekrand, but I had plans for them. I pickled and jarred that naked dancing man and now I'm gonna eat- Oh yeah, something you should know. In Warhammer 3, the Skaven have a unique resource. Food! We get food by defeating our enemies in battle. So, to be clear, we ate this guy. But food is used to instantly upgrade our settlements, which is insanely good. Because we can get a tier 5 city super early. It's literally turn 23 and we already have a tier 5 city. And it takes most factions 40 plus turns to get the same thing. But now that I have Akron fully upgraded, we can recruit our best units like Eshen Triads and Brood Horrors right on the front line. At this point, I'd recruited so many cheap Skaven slave armies that I practically didn't even know what to do with them all. I had armies in the Darklands, in the deserts, in the jungles, armies literally just everywhere, and turned my expansion from a snowball into an avalanche. Oh dear god. But all this expansion gave me the food and money I needed to get critical settlements like Kemri and Galbarez to tier 5. But just as I was about to continue my attack south, I saw it. A green smudge of plague. A little pestilent pox on the Arabian Peninsula. Riggs was here. And let me tell you how we got here. Lord Skrulk doesn't have it easy starting his campaign in the jungle continent of Lustria. Expansion through the bush is slow, and there are a lot of very powerful legendary lords in the area that for some reason don't take too kindly to having our jittery little fella here as a neighbor. <laughs> so to deal with these tough enemies, my strategy was to take full advantage of all the unique bonuses Clan Pestilence provides. For starters, the upkeep for all my plague units is cut in half, and so is the price of the buildings that recruit them. These include some pretty solid units you can get fairly early on into the campaign, especially the Plague Claw Catapults. They're one of the best artillery pieces in the entire game. And so because of this low cost, they made for the perfect tool in dealing with the growing strength of each remaining Lord surrounding us. My armies then spread out like the plague, while spreading the actual plague, and we infected and conquered the rest of the jungle. Yeah, so spreading disease is kind of like my whole thing. <laughs> Not only can Clan Pestilence spread it easily, Easier, but at the same time as it harms other settlements and makes enemy armies attrition, it boosts my own army replenishment and settlement growth. And at this point in the campaign, I noticed Mac's rapid expansion and knew if I wanted to win, I would need to use my plagues to great effect to compete against his numbers advantage. So with my strategy in place, I loaded up my plague monks, priests, and claw catapults and sailed over the great ocean to share the plague gospel across all the land. My goal was to quickly win some decisive battles against Mac, then blitz and occupy his best settlements and thus cutting the head off the snake before it grows too large to stop. 
Oh, oh declaring war on me, buddy. Come and get them from the map, daddy. When the war broke out, I was definitely nervous. Even though I had a ton of armies, they were spread out over a huge area, leaving only a few to hold the line. So I had to play a defensive game while I waited for reinforcements. My plan was to hold rigs at the mouth of the peninsula, forming a choke point at Zandri and the Pools of Despair. Unfortunately though, I misclicked like an idiot and sent one of my armies straight into the lion's den. Well, that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know what Oh but... my god. <sighs> well, obviously I'm fighting this. Ah, uh, yeah. In classic fashion, Riggs ambushed our ass. But our Skaven slaves performed really well in the battle. So although we lost, it was a tough fight for both sides, providing a small window of the carnage that was to come. So while I gathered my forces and licked my wounds, I also recruited a powerful Doomflayer army, with each of its Hell's Angels being extremely good against Riggs' playbooks. It would just take a while to recruit. So while our Doomflayers were busy ruining everyone's nice time, I opened a new front in the north against Riggs' ally, the one and only only Aket Claw Engineers Death! This Atomic Boy Scout takes great pleasure in math, science, and splitting the atom on anyone who gets in his way. So this insane scientist has gotta go. I sent the reinforcements that were headed south and sent them north instead, intent on taking the mecca of the rats, Skaven Blight. Skaven Blight offers crazy buffs to the owning faction. If we can capture it, we'll have a huge advantage throughout the rest of the war. So I captured the nearby settlements of Miragliano and Taboro, cutting off the city like a Jewish man in foreskin. But before I could capture the city, Riggs sent an army to help Ickit in the battle for Skaven Blight and trapped one of my armies. This was hugely important. There was no way I could capture Skaven Blight without Ickbolt's army. So if Riggs killed him here, that would put the entire operation at risk. Whoever wins this battle not only gains control of Skaven Blight, but also will control the entirety of Astalia. So defeat for either side could play a major role in the outcome of the war. I don't know why it says I, I feel like I have an advantage here. You've mostly saving saves. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I also have some good units. We'll have to see. The Battle of Skaven Blight would answer the age-old question of quality over quantity. Riggs' army was comprised almost entirely of plague monks, which are zealous rat men running on blind faith and Sinai, which would make sense seeing as they Leroy Jenkins straight into my general. Oh my god, he just ran in. Speaking of our warlord generals, they get another awesome buff. I'm coming day and night. Riding on a mutated rat intent on consuming your soul, which makes our lord insanely strong in battle. So if we were going to win this fight, it would be on the back of our generals. As the battle progressed, our formations fell into chaos, with small contingents of troops running all over the battlefield. Although I had my slingers and sniper teams firing on overdrive, Riggs' plague monks continued to chop through my lines and tip the balance in his favor. So in a decisive action to save the battle, I charged Ickbolt into Riggs' lord, killing him and feeding his soul to the big rat. Wait, how is my lord still in the field there? He's shattered. How? So he was like running off. You were able to click on him still? He wasn't like clickable at all. I wasn't even watching. Killing Riggs' lord was the Hail Mary we needed, flipping the battle back into our favor and giving us a narrow but crucial victory. I thought I could have won. I mean, I think I would have won if, should have won if your lord wasn't so amazing. He's just insane. He was way better than I thought he was going to be. Holy shit. The outcome of this battle was crippling for Riggs, but great for us. Skaven Blight was now under our control, and the whole of Astalia was given some freedom. Riggs confederated Ickit before I was able to kill him, though, which sucked. Oh my fuck. But this was a huge victory for us. With Astalia secured, I was able to free up our forces in the region and pressure Riggs' position in Araby. So I consolidated my forces and prepared for a major attack on Riggs that would push him from our shores and drive his ass into the sea. Now was the time for a decisive blow. In spite of our early wins and expansion, all my power in the desert is still at risk to fall in a few short turns if I can't keep Mac from breaking this choke point. Our biggest threat is this Doomflare death stack that can easily beat any of my armies in a one-on-one. -on -one. This means I don't have the army strength advantage anymore, and that means that I needed to get real sneaky. I think we can all be a real sneaky sometimes. So although I'm all about spreading that plague, don't get me wrong, I'm still a scheming little rat. So upon recruitment of my plague lords, I put their first four skill points into giving each of them an extra 30% chance for a successful ambush. And oh boy, did this come in handy. Because my armies were either in ambush or out of Max line of sight, he severely underestimated my strength in the area, thinking I had 
spent most of my armies guarding the provincial capital of Al Haik. At this time, I even had an army travel underground into Max territory to take a settlement of his and hopefully lure some of his armies away from the front. However, this also had the added benefit of making him further believe I didn't have that much force on the front lines. Mac figured he would be okay splitting up his armies. Kyle, Dumb bitch. Sure. It was now or never for me. And this army was kind of shitty, but if I was able to get an ambush opposed to an open field battle, it stood a real chance in punching well above its pay grade. Yes! Hell yeah! For this battle and every future battle, Plague Claw Catapults will be by far my most important units. They are able to deal just stupid damage. Oh my god. That was pretty gross. That was a great early win for us. I just then needed to quickly retreat this army. Well, this army got fucking wiped out. But at least I think this ended up being a good trade for us regardless. And then I revealed our army that was in ambush. I... Yeah, he's fucking dead. And with Mac weakened, it was time to attack the settlement to try and wipe out the rest of his left flank. At the start of the battle, I ran my lords and heroes up to distract Mac's main army. I then proceeded to bomb the fuck out of his reinforcements entering the field. My units pushed up to pin down his main army and wipe it out, while I continued with an endless artillery barrage on his other army. We ended up winning the battle with minimal casualties, which was insanely important because we still needed a deterrent against Mac's stronger, ever-growing right flank. And with his left flank completely defeated, we pulled back and consolidated all our armies. However, even with all that, Mac was still able able to push up and capture Al Haik, immediately turning it into a tier 5 settlement. If I allow him to just sit there a while, he'll eventually be able to recruit the Skaven's very best units right in front of me. And then at that point, my forces in the desert are basically fucked. We skirmished with and chiseled away as much strength from Max attack as we could. But now he has a settlement on the front lines capable of building an army the likes of which this world has never seen. And on top of all that, after my defeat in the north, Mac has brought armies down to pressure me from across the water. It was do or die now, lady and gentlemen. I had to make my move and attack Mac before it was too late. Will I have enough strength to deal with his Doomflare army and warlord generals? Can I survive this total onslaught? Does anything even matter? Find out the answer to at least two of these questions right now on more Warpstone. But first, remember to like and subscribe if your name starts with one of these letters. And why not comment down below whatever you want, I'm not stopping you. And finally, a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters for the continued support. You guys are awesome. Now with all that said, back to the vid. So it begins. The battle started when we gave our catapults a volley. However, when taking a defensive position on the hill, I noticed I accidentally left my lord so far ahead of my army. So, Mac came up to assassinate him and... This man had an iron chin. Dude walked away like it was nothing. But after that scare, we both took a bit of time to set up our battle lines after all of our reinforcements had entered the field. I should note that we each have four separate armies going at each other in this fight, so Mac chose to have one of his armies controlled by the AI. And due to a recent warmer three patch, I had no choice in the matter, and one of my armies was automatically set to be controlled by the AI as well. Look, they were shooting at my own fucking units. And this also really sucked, because I was the attacker in this battle. So the AI just charged my army forward and really dictated the speed of my advance. We didn't know what caused this at the time, so needless to say that I was pretty pissed. Why are one of my armies is not controlled by me? What the f Oh, you chose a uh... No, I didn't click shit. This is stupid. That's so stupid. One of mine is controlled by the AI, but I purposely clicked that because I don't I didn't think I could manage it all. I could do it all. So we reformed the line to support my AI units right in time for the battle to truly begin. Max started pushing up the side with his Doom Flares, hoping to sneak around and penetrate my backside. Hey yo, what the fuck? But meanwhile, my Plague Claws were unleashing absolute hellfire. Just endless volleys from the top of this hill, pulverizing Max's front line by perfectly arcing their shots over my units like they were damned rat snipers, I tell ya. My priests were also constantly casting Plague Spells on his units as well. Eventually, Max's left flank collapsed and I was able to begin pushing my infantry forward. However, Mac maintained his Doom Flare assault, and they finally made it to my artillery pieces, where he tied them up and really started giving them the business. At this point, the front lines have been shattered, and the battle was descending into chaos. Our single entities continued to duel each other, though, and even though we both have already suffered massive losses, there were still so many units fighting all over the map. Mac eventually did start bombing me with his own play claws, but my infantry was able to begin swarming his single entities, as well as his Doom Flares, who began to flee. And 
And once Max single entities finally routed as well, the rest of his units broke and fled the battlefield. Well, that win was absolutely huge for us. It allowed us to mop up and push back Max forces in the area. That was a massive win for you there. Like, if you lost that, I think you might have been fucked. But now you're oh, like... Oh, 100%. Now, now I feel like it's flipped. Now I feel like I'm trying to hold you off. I am trying to hold you off. But when you have moments like that, that was fucking awesome. I don't even care that I lost. That battlefield was fucking insane dude See, it's like it's shit like that that makes head to heads just so fun all of max armies ended up coming down with a little case of the plague as well remember this means they can't replenish and even take a little bit of damage each turn and this allowed Ikit claw who was waiting in reserve as the last line of defense in case we lost al haik to sail out into the sea and wipe out max naval invasion before he even had a chance to disembark everything was coming up rigs baby we severely weakened mac and began the advance towards his best settlements to put the final nail in his little rat coffin. But when I tried to underway Ikit up next to my armies on the front lines, some absolute bullshit occurred and... Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Oh shit, did I intercept? Oh, let's go, baby! Despite setbacks in the desert, I finally had a stroke of luck intercepting Ikit's army and dealt him a quick death. Dead. It's so much fucking health too. Look, I was so far. I was next to Morlock. But even with Ikit's death, Riggs was a lot more powerful than I thought. My armies in the region were weak after all the fighting. So the risk of Riggs breaking through our defenses and attacking cities like Kemri and Galbaraz was high. And losing those cities could easily turn the tide of the war against us. Although our Skaven slaves had performed well throughout the war, it was time for an upgrade. With our best cities so close, I started recruiting our best units. Brood horrors, Death Runners, and Doom Wheels. Recruiting these units protected our cities and increased my military strength far beyond what Riggs could recruit on this side of the pond. Riggs didn't know I had these new elite armies, giving me the element of surprise. So I let Riggs push north, buying time for me to finish recruitment and wait for the right moment to strike. Once Riggs had pushed deep enough into me, I launched my attack. I didn't know you had these units. I caught and destroyed multiple armies in Southern Astalia and obliterated his forces in the Badlands. My units were just so much better. And just like that, the tides had once again turned in my favor. Riggs abandoned his positions on our continent, retreating all the way back to Lustria, trying to match my ever-growing strength. Yeah, unfortunately, we just cannot hold on to our lands in the desert any longer. I could only recruit mid-tier units there, and Mac finally started bringing some serious late game firepower. I made the decision then to fall back to our home continent of Lustria, recruit the very best units that I possibly could, and prepare the defenses for Max naval invasion. He would need to send a massive armada to break into my territory and push through my plague units. This means Mac is committing hard to this attack. If I am able to weather this storm without taking devastating damage, Mac will not be able to re-recruit his strength back fast enough, and I'll be able to spread out and take all of the surrounding lands that he stopped protecting. And if we manage to do that, we could still and win this thing. So Mac finally sailed his force over, and when he made landfall, it was time for battle. The battle began with us just bombing each other as usual, but reinforcements quickly arrived, and there was a lot of them. I quickly tried hunting down Mac's Lord Queek in the trees, and after this, I began to rush my plague units forward. Mac was advancing at the same time, however, and we met with a clash. But eventually, my brood horrors barfed on Queek enough until he died, and with their warlord defeated, the rest of Mac's army soon followed suit. And that was a nice win, with not too many losses, but Mac immediately attacked again, so it was a quick round two. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. As if you thought the battle would start any differently. Mac quickly rushed my artillery though and really damaged them. And he just had so many more units coming that I was getting real nervous. We did manage to kill his main army, but took a pretty big beating in the process. But we reformed the line and charged just in time as Mac's full force had made it to the front. But anyway, I started blasting. Bam! And the battle turned to the chaos once again. At the end, I had just enough firepower to turn the tides into my favor. But as Mac retreated, it was bittersweet. I took too many losses. I was still broken. Even though we were able to take down the initial assault and win a couple battles, it made no difference. Thousands of rats died, but Mac's invasion did not. Strength in numbers prevailed, and he was able to wash over the rest of my armies with a suffocating tide of indentured rat. So congrats to Mac on winning the Skaven Civil Wars. And thank you all very much for watching. We hope y'all enjoyed. But before we go, we want to give a quick shout out to our patrons, Doshav, Degenerate McChicken, Ivanov Yanislav, and Cyron. Check the description for a link to our Discord. And remember, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Warpstone.